photoresistors or light dependent resistors, LDRs, call them what you want, are very useful electronic components. They can be used in many circuits. As the name implies, their resistance is dependent upon the amount of light that is incident upon them. And this is useful for detecting light levels, sensing various things. So in this video, what I'm going to do is tell you about these components, a bit about their structure, a bit about their specifications and some th of the things to be aware of when you're using them. So let's get started. You may see them pop up in circuit designs from time to time. They have quite a unique circuit symbol. There are two types that you may see. The one with the rectangular resistor inside is the more standard one, although you'll see them with the zigzag line fairly often as well. We'll come on to their performance a little bit later, but let's look at exactly what they are and how they work. LDRs are made from a semiconductor material. Cadmium sulphide was probably the most common, but other materials like lead sulphide and indium antimonide and others are being used, especially because of the restrictions on the use of cadmium these days. Even though LDRs are made from a semiconductor material, they are still resistors and they don't act like diodes or transistors. They have a high resistance in the dark, but the resistance falls as the light level increases. The resistance can be several hundred kilo ohms in the dark and fall to values of a few hundred ohms in bright light. This occurs because electrons are released in the material as light strikes the active area and in turn these electrons enable the current to flow. The photoresistors have contacts at the top of the structure and an active layer underneath as we see in this diagram. Many LDRs or photoresistors try to maximise the light entry into the active layer by having a sort of zigzag or what's called an interdigital pattern on the top. It's possible to see this on many components. Let's now take a quick look at one of these devices. What I've done here is to give a quick demonstration, just a broad brush demonstration of how these uh, light dependent resistors work or photoresistors. And what I've done is to connect them or connect it to a couple of leads which are connected to the test meter there and you can see that it's uh, uh, reading about uh, just under a kilo ohm there so uh, quite quite a low resistance if I lift it up and, and point it towards the light off to the left there then it goes down even more but if I cover it up with my hand and this isn't a won't give a 100% dark by any means uh, you can see that the resistance goes up and it's actually gone off the end scale there. But also if I, for example, take a torch and shine it on the uh, LDR, the resistance goes down even more. So that's a quick demonstration of how these light dependent resistors work and what they can do. It's found that the different materials used in LDRs give a different light sensitivity profile. They are somewhat more sensitive to different portions of the light spectrum. It's not normally a problem, but if it's critical, then check the spec for the particular LDR you're going to use. An important aspect of the performance of LDRs is the time it takes for them to respond. They are known for being rather slow. It occurs because it takes a little while for the charges to build up or decay within the materials. But for many circuits where they're just used to monitor slowly changing light levels, this just isn't an issue. To gain an idea of the typical response time and latency, a photoresistor normally responds within a few tens of milliseconds. As a result, they're not used as receivers for fast optical data links and in other circuits where speed is important. In terms of their other parameters, they can have a dark resistance of probably a quarter of a mega ohm or a few hundred kilo ohms, as I said before, and a resistance under strong light of a couple th of thousand ohms. But check the spec for your particular LDR for more exact figures. Also, in the demonstration, the light didn't reach anywhere near total darkness, so the full dark resistance wasn't reached. So that's our quick summary about the light dependent resistor or, or photoresistor. If you need any more information, head over to the description where there are links and, and generally more information. But please also don't forget to watch more of our videos and also like this video and subscribe to our channel for more useful information.